Hey guys, Jay at Broader Performance again. All right, this is something a lot of people ask about. Um, I guess, I don't know, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes around on the internet and... So this is a popular version of a C6 R code servo. Uh, it's not an original, it's an aftermarket. And I won't say who makes it because I don't want to ruffle any feathers. Uh, but it's one of the popular ones out there and it's fine, it works. Uh, but the concern that people seem to have is this. Uh, the o-ring grooves in it you know these o-ring grooves here on the piston uh, there's people saying that they're not cut properly and you need to cut them deeper because there's just such a tremendous amount of interference fit with these o-rings that it's very difficult to move the piston and the bore and you know I will agree with that I don't know that this is necessarily an issue you need to concern yourself with uh, because we are talking about hydraulics and even though this may seem difficult to you to insert it and man it just seems really tough going in yeah hydraulic pressure doesn't really probably have an issue with it you know it's a lot stronger than you are so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna address this just because so many people ask about it and I'm gonna give my thoughts and opinions on this uh, for what it's worth and I don't you know I used to years ago work for a company and we cut a lot of you know I was a machinist and I cut a lot of o-ring grooves for a lot of different applications and I'll be honest with you, that's a long time ago now. You know, we're going back almost 20 years ago. And I have forgotten more about O-ring groove design than I remember today. So I'll be honest with you, I don't really remember what the proper interference fit is supposed to be. Uh, what you're supposed to have, and you know what, I'm going to get a piece of paper and a pen and kind of show you some things so give me one second here okay I meant to have this before so you know automotive and industrial have different ways of looking at things and I you know I was taught on industrial stuff and in the automotive world I don't know, there you just have different ideas. So, on your O-ring groove, if you just take an O-ring groove here, so the O-ring manufacturer is gonna specify a certain width and a certain depth of this groove. And whether it's on a flange or a piston like we're showing here, they have different specifications. So typically, they want a radius in these corners and they spec that they sometimes even spec a radius on the outer corners here and the depth and width is uh, pretty pretty tight tolerance they specify because these are engineers and they try to be sometimes a little overly precise but the theory is that when the o-ring compresses it kind of it kind of fills up this space and that's, you know, that's kind of what they look at. And automotive, well, let, let me say this too. Um, on something like our piston here, because this goes, has, it has a back and forth motion. Okay, and what I've learned is the groove is extra wide. Okay, and the reason for this, so here's your O-ring. So as the piston moves back and forth, the O-ring rolls across the surface rather than compressing it, and we're still compressing it, but the O-ring is supposed to roll across the surface rather than scraping across the surface. Uh, at least this is what I was taught in industrial applications. Automotive doesn't seem to do that. The groove really isn't much wider than the O-ring itself, typically. Uh, they kind of 
it's pretty common they just kind of wedge these things in and I don't think the people that designed this servo really necessarily designed it much different than what I tend to see from the manufacturers in these applications. You know, a lot of times these things just fit tight and you know, right or wrong, that's just kind of the way it is. And I do think that this one here in particular is uh, too tight. I haven't really been addressing it. I haven't really, I don't really think it's been a big issue, but uh, so, you know, what is too tight? What am I talking about here? So if you look at this and we're going to look at, you know, this two sides here, but if we just look at this small side, I've got the O-ring in here. And if I measure the bore, and then I go ahead and measure this O-ring in a relaxed state. Um, so basically, I'm getting about a 30 thousandths difference in diameter. Okay, so that's our interference fit. And yeah, I'd say that's too much. I honestly don't remember what they normally would spec that at, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't 30 thou. I want to say it was more like... 10 thou, somewhere in that vicinity. Um, so, here's what concerns people. If you do, if this does bother you and, and you do see these things on the internet that, you know, yeah, I've got to fix this. And, you know, the fix is you got to cut the O-ring grooves deeper. Well, not an easy thing to do if you don't have a lathe. Um, even if you do have a lathe, it's kind of time-consuming. Here's another option for you. If you take O-rings that are a size smaller, okay, like here, this, this O-ring is too small. And what'll happen is this'll have to stretch a lot and it shrinks the outside diameter. So if you just get O-rings that are just a little bit, you know, one size smaller, you know, in or out or whatever, uh, one size, two size, whatever you want to get whatever interference fit you feel comfortable with. So if you're wanting five or ten thou or fifteen thou, whatever it is, instead of thirty thou, uh, just get a smaller O-ring that's going to stretch and shrink. You know, it's going to shrink it in diameter because that's a stretch. Uh, so that's an easy way if, you know, you don't have a lathe or don't want to take the time to do that. You know, you do have a lathe, but don't want to take the time to do it. That's just another easy way around it. Uh, you know, the other thing here is they have put O-ring grooves on this pin. Uh, so the theory behind there is if the bore in the case is worn, you're not going to lose a lot of pressure. This, is, uh, this pin is going to be for your servo apply. And it's also going to have an influence on the cross leak between the apply and the release side of the servo. I like this idea, honestly, but what I don't understand on this one is they've got, if you look here, if you can see, this is a um, Teflon seal style on this end, and then in here, they use just a regular normal round o-ring I don't know why they made both ends different I don't know why they wouldn't do them both the same uh, so that's kind of questionable to me now the interference fit on the rubber o-ring is about 15 thousandths is what I'm measuring rather than 30 thou what we're seeing on the on the big piston uh, 15 thou is a lot more reasonable still feels pretty tight when you put it in that bore but again you know you're moving this primarily with hydraulics now yeah when there's no oil going to either side and you're just relying on the return spring just to keep it in its rest position I don't really think there's an issue now one thing I will say this particular servo it comes with two return springs one of them's a light duty spring and the one of other one's a little bit heavier and they tell you if you want a more firm and snappy one two shift to put that real light spring on well that concept's very attractive to a lot of people and i'd say probably most often people put that light spring in there but 
my opinion, do not use that light spring. It's just not enough. It's not really going to have any noticeable effect on your one, two shift. Again, hydraulics are compressing this spring, not you. And hydraulics have no problem with the heavier spring. It's not going to affect its feel. Uh, not in my experience. And in theory, it doesn't make sense either. Yeah, in practice, it, I don't. I, I can't tell. The only thing I will say is by using that really light spring, it's going to... Uh, you run the risk, especially with the kind of interference fit they've got on these O-rings here, you run the risk of it not being able to reach its full rest position when there's no hydraulics involved. So use a heavy spring. I honestly would just use the heavy spring that came with the unit. Don't use the springs that came with this. If you do have to use the springs that came with this, always go with the heavier one. That's just my opinion. Uh, you may not like that, but I figured I'd give my opinion on it anyways. Another thing on this, I have used these and I don't put this O-ring seal in. And I have had people notice this and scold me on it. Oh man, you forgot an O-ring. No, I didn't. I don't put it. Uh, if you look here, if you look at this hole here and this hole here, that bypasses the O-ring. So why do we need the O-ring? The original iCode servo did not have an O-ring here. You don't need it. I don't use it. I would suggest that you don't use this O-ring either. Uh, let the cover center up on the piston rather than trying to center up in the bore. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, it's not going to cause a leak because, uh, again, we've bypassed this already. Uh, the way this works, if you look at this hole here, this hole here vents into the case. There's a little notch here. So if any oil leaks past either the small side of the piston or the large side of the piston and gets trapped in this bore, this is here so you, it doesn't create a, a hydro lock where the piston gets stuck and can't move. So if you didn't have this vent or, you know, vent it here or just leave this O-ring off, whatever you want to do. But we just don't want any oil that ends up leaking between these seals that could potentially cause this piston to hydro lock and it would get stuck and, you know, it could... It could get stuck on in second gear, and when you shift a third, it'll, the transmission could potentially lock up. That's worst case scenario. So this, make sure this vent is open and clear. Some people put a plug in here for some modifications. Make sure, if you're using this particular servo here, make sure this is open and free. And, you know, do what you want. If you want to put the O-ring here, if you just think, man, I don't know if this guy's right. Fine, put the O-ring. I don't care, but you know you're you're bypassed with this hole anyways. The this hole intersects with this one and, and goes past the O-ring. So spend some time thinking about that and realize, yeah, that is kind of goofy. They put the O-ring on the outside, and if you ever lucky enough to see one of those original R servos, uh, they don't have that O-ring, so. It's up to you if you want to put it or not. Don't care, but... Uh, so that's, you know... That's my opinion on this servo. Um, I hope that kind of helps you if you're somebody who is maybe seeing these things on the internet and worried about it. Uh, you know, I gave you another way to address it and maybe you don't need to or not. I'm going to probably start pretty soon. I, I used to make these R servos years ago. I'm going to start making them again. I, between what's out there in the aftermarket and lately getting it, I've been having some issues with that still for the last few years. So I think we're going to start making these. And I might take a risk and do this uh, with a wider slot so that the O-ring rolls rather than scrapes across the surface. Um, I think I'm going to incorporate this design. I'm going to speak with an engineer uh, from one of the O-ring manufacturers. Yeah, 
know, before I design my slot and, uh, you know, check in with those engineers and how the, you know, the dimensions need to be on that because I don't remember anymore. I believe in my design years ago, I did do it this way, but unfortunately that's been a lot of years and I don't have the information anymore, so I'll have to re-get that and do all that stuff. Uh, it's a shame that you get older. You go through life trying to learn things, and then when you get to a certain age, you start to forget everything you learned. Um, so that's uh, just one of the sad facts of life here. So anyways, yeah, I forgot to show you this. This is a unit that came in to be repaired, so I'm going to finish getting this cleaned up and make my changes on this servo and uh, put it all back together and get it back to the customer. But I figured I'd share that with you. As these things come up, I'll keep making little videos and things on it. So, anyways, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.